we would just say it. But uh, so Deepport is roughly two thirds the size of the Florida Everglades, and it formed first in an oxbow lake on the uh, to the on the south banks of the Brahmaputra River, uh, which is where the Deepport Beale is, is sort of in southwestern Assam. And, and where is Assam? Uh, Assam, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Assam is in northwest <coughs> India. So if you were to say uh, if you were to look India and Thailand, and then look at look at the uh, look at the bay, the uh, the sea rather, and then go up from there, you would have uh, Assam would be up into the center where the Brahmaputra River is, just just north of uh, Bangladesh, and so south and so south of Madhya Pradesh, and a little bit to the south and west of uh, Meghalaya, north northeastern India. You, we have an expert in Indian geography here too, so you can fill in the. Fill in the blanks there. So if you were to be looking at a psalm, for example, here the river comes out of the steps of the Himalayas, comes down and then discharges into the into the Gulf. And so you'd have a psalm, then you would have a Ronco Pradesh where the headwaters are, move over over here, and you would have Bhutan, and then you would have Nepal. So a psalm is just in there. Yeah. Uh, I think that was a Yes, please. So when you spoke about, you know, putting in maybe sensor systems that would alert the elephants with light and sound, um, even though you talk about the size of this, it looks like from the photography that there may be certain passage areas that the elephants are using that you could target. It's yes. like probably not equal all along that distance. So I would think there are probably areas that are more commonly used by the elephants. Sure, good point. So there you are. can target those areas with those types mm -hmm. of systems. Yes, yeah, so that's where Kali spent his nights. And these, these areas, so maybe 100 meters or so wide, where most of the elephants would go across when most of them were killed. Mm -hmm. You know, there. So that would be, that would be good, too. There are, there are other ways we've worked with uh, some groups to reroute elephants around. For you. you saw the trellis bridge for the railroad to get them to go around, but sometimes it's just really isn't possible. You know, they're fairly determined. I would think we hard to an elephant. We actually, uh, we, and we were working with Operation Eye of the Tiger India on a project, and there were some squatters from in the stands, Pakistan, they think, that had settled into an area and taken the area over and were poisoning or shooting elephants or anything else that were coming across their farm. And the tension, the political tension was so great that working with them was not, at least, uh, was not a near-term solution. So we, we partnered with this group, Operation Eye of the Tiger India, and we built, a, we built five miles, or we had built five miles of a, a heavy pole fence, heavy enough that uh, it would take some work for an elephant to push down. I'm not sure that there's a lot that an elephant can't push down or a group of them, but and then we put a high voltage, low amperage 440 across the top. So this is this is not this cannot be lethal to an elephant. But if they touch it, they're aware that it's you know hot. So between those two things, that was good enough to get them to go one direction or the other around this uh, illegal settlement and then regain their corridor on the other side of it and keep going without without harm. Uh, it's uh, just an aside. It's there are stories of where. Elephants would recognize the control panel or the arrestor, you know, the the, the uh, joint for the for the hot wire, and would take that box apart and pull the workings out, shut the wire down, pull the wire, and start going over the fence or something like that. So sometimes they're almost too smart for their own good. They're actually brilliant. They're beyond uh, anything we can really think about as far as intelligence and uh, uh, especially social intelligence and scope memory. Uh, communication is highly sophisticated, as much so probably as whales and dolphins. So, uh, yeah, questions? Okay. One thing, how much time do we have? Um, yeah, there's some extra time on the padding on the back okay. of this too, so we can do more. So I wanted to mention one thing that I, so in the context of, of human elephant ecology, elephant human ecology, that I think, uh, so teaching sustainability, one of the things I hear, and I suspect everyone in this room has heard this from someone, is you've said uh, something to the, they've said something to the effect of, I don't even know where to start. The problem is so huge, I don't know what to do with it, how to manage it, where I fit in. Sometimes I just feel like it's, it's hopeless. And so I've been using this model in uh, sustainability psychology, the Fresno lens. You, 
might know the Fresno lens. It's a lens system that makes lighthouses possible. And uh, I ran, I just happened across this a, a few years ago, and I thought about the value of it. You know, the Fresno lens, whether it's the half meter high uh, system or the four meter high system, is this intricate, very intricate composite of lenses in all different angles that make a relatively small light source, of, you know, capable of, capable of being projected 20, 30 miles across the ocean. And so when I wanted to illustrate the comprehensiveness of our problem, as well as what I refer to as our greatest opportunity, I asked them to think about, show them a picture, we don't have a picture here, but of a Fresno lens. <coughs> and I imagine, I just say, think about two things that you're most passionate about. Just two, of all the things you care about. You know, you could you run the gamut of, of people that were interested in hol holistic sustainability, right? We're interested in so many things, and so many things can rise to the top. What are two? And imagine these to be your lens to look into the system. Enter the comprehensive problem through your specific care, your passion, your lens. And when you get there, you will realize the inextricable connections of all other passions with it. And so it's just like what I tell them, it's just like the light source within that, like some of the largest of these lighthouses have only a 400 watt bulb in them. And when, you, when you're looking through, you can see the bulb, hopefully it's off, you can see the bulb through the lens, there's not much there but a bulb, and you see a lot of glass around you. Go inside and look out, and you can see the power of it because you're seeing the system as a whole. And so using our lens to enter the comprehensive problem allows us to look out at our greatest opportunity because we're bright when we go in, but together as a network or a system, we're brilliant. It's the metaphor. And so for me, it resonates because my entry point, if you will, the lens that I look through to start thinking about and actually uh, took me towards psychology, sustainability psychology to develop the field was elephants. So that's human ecology in a nutshell, or elephant human ecology in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. It seems to work for people, it certainly worked for me, and I was wondering if it would work for others, and it seems to. Yeah. So you had said something about um, that elephants could serve as role models for humans. <coughs> mm -hmm. So uh, what uh, specifically about the elephants? Sure. Well, so we're, you know, I, I, like anybody that teaches, I think, or illustrates, I use models a lot to illustrate the Fresno lens, for example. And often enough, people, they think, well, what society in this world uh, is actually one that we could emulate and that would be, it would not be perfect, of course, but would be a, a society that would has, has a functioning, has a social intelligence and so forth, as a high multiple intelligences that we could emulate or at least pattern after. And I tell them it's the elephant society. It's, it's one where the regard for other is extremely high. They manage resources wisely. Uh, it's a matriarchal, generally, a society, so a lot of people, sociologists, psychologists, would think that's going to work better for us. We've had a lot of time to try the patriarchal society. I think it's working. And uh, so there's, that's, I give them that model. It isn't perfect. You know, for one, the, the males are moved away, and they're not, they don't participate generally with the, with the herd as it gets older, but they, stay in, but they stay close by. That might be a problem for someone if they, if they think about it, but it is a holistically sustainable society, so it's a good model. Learning about elephant society co typically causes people to think more about where they are as an individual in society. So there's an intra and an interpersonal experience that takes place when someone studies elephants, reads about them, asks about them, thinks about how they might be more like one. <coughs> Thanks for the question. Some new people came in. I wondered if should we show the video um, one more time?